I'm Pierce Jens with Barazza Support. Today I'm going to show you how to change the load cell in your Forte. Error code LLLL and error code HHHH are both indicative of a bad load cell. After clearing all the beans out of your grinder and removing the hopper and the grounds bin, raise both of the lever arms all the way to the top. Remove the single 2 millimeter hex key screw. I like to use the hopper lid to keep all of my nuts and bolts straight. Lay the grinder with the display against your work surface. Remove all four feet from the bottom of the grinder. The best tool for moving the feet are side cutters. The sharp edge help to grab the feet. Remove the Phillips screws from underneath of the feet, four total. If you're having difficulty getting the rear two screws out, it helps to press up on the casing while removing the screw. I'm going to press up on the right side of the casing while removing the rear right screw. And do the same thing with the other screw. One. So it needs a little bit more encouragement. Okay. The two screws under the front feet of the grinder have star lock washers on them. Take care to put both the screws and their lock washers in your bolt tray. Once all four screws are removed, you can grab the rear case in the grinder and lift it off to remove it. Go ahead and set that to the side. Flip the grinder over so it's laying on your back on the work surface. At home, it may be easiest to set the grinder upside down at this step. But for educational purposes, I'm going to do it as such so that you can see me remove the one screw that secures the front display. Once the single display screw is removed, we will use a flathead screwdriver, insert it into the slot that the lever arm rides in, and gently push out on the display. Once the display is slightly popped out on the bottom side, you can rock it out and pull it down to get the top free. And take a little bit of wiggling. Once the top and the bottom of the display are released, it will be the two wires holding it onto the grinder. The best way to unplug these two wires is to use your side cutters to lightly grip the connector and rock it back and forth to unplug it from the board. The circuitry is very delicate so be careful when doing this.
With the display unplugged, we can go ahead and set it to the side. It's easiest to remove your old load cell with the end of the load cell wire clipped off. This is your load cell wire. It does not have any blue wires. Go ahead and clip off the end of the load cell. Discard it. With the end of the wire cut off, you can pull it out of the back of the grinder and then grab the bad load cell and pull it out to remove it. Discard the bad load cell. Grab your new load cell for installation. Looking at the load cell, you will clearly see the wires go into one end of the load cell. On the other end of the load cell, there is a D-shaped indentation on one side and no indentation on the other side. When this piece is installed, the D-shaped indentation is up and towards the front of the machine. Install your new load cell. Feed the wire in from the front. Before feeding the wire in, bend it slightly to help it go through. After feeding it slightly through from the front, you can pull it through from the back. and needs to go over the top of the ground wire. It must go through the two columns towards the outside. It must go over the top of your micro adjustment arm, which can best be seen from the front. Once your wire has been pulled to the front of the display, we can go ahead and secure the load cell back into position. Once you're able to see the threaded holes, go ahead and get the two gold screws started. Do not tighten the gold screws, get them both started. After both the gold screws are started, we need to reinstall the belt casting. The belt casting slides into position. And there are two machine screws that secure the belt casting. These machine screws go underneath of the front feet. The best way to do is to rock the grinder onto its back, insert the machine screws and thread them into place. We can go ahead and reinstall the front feet this time. Next, install the load cell platform. Take great care when installing the two load cell platform screws. It did not matter when removing the load cell as it was already damaged. However, excess pressure will damage the new load cell. 
It is capable of a 300 gram load, so do not press down on it firmly when installing these screws. With the load cell platform installed, we can center it on the belt casting. While holding it center, we're going to tighten the two gold screws on the bottom. Alter between one gold screw and the other. I'm going to get one snug, get the second snug. The whole time I'm taking care to keep the load cell platform centered on the belt casting. Notice I am altering between tightening one gold screw and then the second. These gold screws do not, do not need to be very tight. My load cell platform is centered on the belt casting. If it is not centered, loosen the two gold screws and repeat this process until you do have your load cell platform centered. At this point, we can go ahead and reinstall the serial number plate. The wide part of the serial number plate goes on the wide part of the base. Install the display. The connector with blue wire plugs into the top. The load cell plugs into the bottom. Once both wires are plugged in, hook the top of the display into the grinder and pivot the bottom into position. Reinstall the faceplate screw. You will need to press on the faceplate while installing the screw for proper alignment. Place the machine with the display against your work surface to slide the rear casing back into position. First install the two millimeter screw in the top rear casing. Do not tighten this screw until the two screws beneath the rear feet are installed. Insert the rear feet. Finish tightening your two millimeter case screw. 
With the grinder plugged in, press and hold stop and wait simultaneously to reboot the grinder. While the grinder is rebooting, press and hold manual and wait to enter calibration mode. The unit will display a value. Press manual. The display will flash cal, then 200. At this point, it's ready for a 200 gram input weight on the load cell. This must be an exact 200.0 gram input weight to properly calibrate the unit. Set your 200 gram weight on the load cell. It will flash 200, then pass, and then show the actual weight on the load cell. At this point, your scale is properly calibrated and your grinder is ready to return to operation.